Okay, guys, starting off in your child's pose, come on down. Big toes together. Forehead either on the mat or if it feels a little bit tense and it doesn't quite want to go down, you can rest on your elbows or your forearms. Some kind of way to just get your lower back to, to open up. So hopefully you feel some spaciousness in the low back in your child's pose. And find that breath. It's connecting with the feeling of a very deep inhale. And a very deep exhale. Take some time just noticing everything about your breath, the sound of it. Drag it out longer and longer. Allow each one to be a little bigger, bringing more space between each rib. Okay, moving around the back of your body too here. And hopefully this feels really nice. That's a great release as we we're neutralizing your lumbar curve and your cervical curve and your neck and your low back. So any tension that has been gathered in there might be melting away. And just use your breath for that. Notice where you feel this particularly, okay? Maybe your hip creases are feeling some sense of release and some intensity maybe. Okay, you can always back out of it by taking your knees wider if it's too much. However, it's a really nice release for those hip creases. So if you can just breathe into it, you might feel a sense of softness growing Okay, notice also the tops of your legs, okay, from your kneecaps all the way up across the top of your thigh. All that tissue is spreading open. The back of your thigh getting a great massage as the hamstrings are squished out. Your calves, okay, your legs are getting smooshed from the front and the back. Bring some extra softness to your jaw. Let it hang. And your eyebrows, see if you can maybe smoosh your forehead on the floor, roll your eyebrows and the bridge of your nose out. And let's breathe in, begin to move. So keep your big breath, reach your hands forward, 
gripping with your tiger claw hands. So start to press down into your fingertips and lift your palm, lifting your elbows as well. You'll feel your armpits wake up. Think of sliding your shoulder blades down your back and feel all the little muscles around your shoulders getting a little wake up. Maybe we'll start to rock and look over by one armpit and look over by the other, rotating your upper spine. And feel that rotation in your neck, move down to your middle back. Should feel nice. Keep a long neck. So keep that shoulder blade moving away, giraffe neck kind of feeling. And let's start to warm up upper body a little bit here. We'll get the chest and the heart nice and warm. So pause here, look forward and grip with your tiger claw. So if you've got a mat, you'll see the mat buckle underneath your grip. And then keep your elbows low. Keep your heart low as you pull yourself forward. So elbows are hovering, heart hovers, and then pause when your heart is just above your thumbs and a little chaturanga with your tailbone pointing up. You're looking forward, elbows in. And then we'll press it back to a child's pose. And let's do that a few more times. That'll be one of our little warm up mini flows. So inhale, pull your heart forward into your chaturanga. You can be really low or a little higher if you need a little less challenge. Okay, and exhale back to that child's. Keep breathing, inhale, hover. Exhale, child's. If you've experimented here, you've noticed that the lower you stay, the more challenging it is for your upper body and the more warming it is. Okay, the higher you go, the less challenge and the more gentle. So you can modify this to be just right for you. Just moving and breathing. Feel your spine go into flexion as it rounds into child's pose. Feel your spine go into extension as it arches into this chaturanga. Keep those elbows in. Let's do three more. Three. Two more. Last one. Nice. Okay, when you come back to child's pose, walk your hands back towards your legs. Okay, and we'll, if you can stand it, go ahead and tuck your toes underneath you and sit on your heels. Okay, for some of you, this is not comfortable. So don't worry about it. You can always untuck whenever it gets to be annoying or uncomfortable. Okay, and just sit on your feet. No problem. So if you can stand it, try it a little bit because it's really good for your feet to stretch out all that tissue, okay? especially if you're a runner or someone who uses your feet a lot. And we're just gonna twist a little bit. So before we begin to twist, I want you to put a little activation in your legs. So almost kind of like you, you wanted to press the floor away, start to activate your legs to push the floor downward and then put a little tuck in your belly button inward. So your tailbone kind of points forward. Okay, so long neutral spine. And from this neutral spine, we're going to play around with twisting and opening up the front body a little bit. So this can be very gentle at first. Just take your right fingers and drop them somewhere by your right foot on the floor. And yes, you'll have to lean over a little bit to do that, but that's okay because I want you to lift your hips just as much as you like and reach up with that left arm. So we have a big side stretch along the left side and also the front of your body getting a great stretch. Big breath in when you're up and exhale to come down. We'll switch sides. Left fingers somewhere by the left foot. Inhaling, body up. Okay, open up as much as you like. You can lift your hips a little or a lot. Exhale to come down. Let's take a few more like that. Okay, inhale up. 
can be tiny, you can barely lift your hips if you like, and exhale down. Make it big or little. So keep it going, okay? Building warmth, bringing some space into your front body where we tend to get more tense. So as you might, you might loosen up a little bit into this, you might wanna take your fingers more behind you to make it more of a, more of a stretch, okay? It's up to you. I like to put my fingers right behind my toes. Let's do three more on each side. Just find your own pace, okay? Two more. Last one on each side. Finish it out nice and slow and easy. Then once you come back to center, walk those hands forward, tuck your toes here, find a downward facing dog. Let's give the legs a very gentle walk out Okay, nothing crazy. We're not super warm in the legs. Just notice how the back of the body is feeling. Okay, we get a great stretch along your whole back of your leg, up through your glutes, across the backs of your shoulders here. And if down dog is ever a little too much, you can always bend your knees or drop them. Okay, just keep that in mind. But I just want to flow gently here and start to build some heat. So you feel free to come along with me as we flow or feel free to take breaks at any time. Okay. Here we go. Inhaling here, move your heart forward and find a little plank posture. Okay. Remember, you can have your knees on the floor for that. No problem. As you exhale, walk to your hands. And fold, you can make the knee bend really deep here because we're not super warm. Inhale to roll yourself up. Lift your heart nice and high. Exhale here, make a little bend in your knees. Okay, drop those hips. We're gonna make cactus arms as we go into a chair posture. So cactus arms drop down your back, tailbone points down, Utkatasana. Inhale back up to standing, straight up. Then exhale here, fold it, hinging at your hips, maybe bending your knees if you feel tense in your legs. Halfway up on your inhale, stretch your chest forward. And exhale to fold it. Shake your head a little more. Palms are down here, so inhaling back to your plank. Remember to use your knees if you like. And exhale slowly down all the way. Inhale for a nice little cobra. Grip the mat, pull on your hands, lift your heart up. And exhale. Tuck your toes, meet you in a down dog. You can come up through hands and knees if you like, or you can try to push yourself all the way up and back. Okay, we'll just do that little Warming up vinyasa two more times. Maybe we'll go a teensy bit faster. Here we go. Inhaling, find your plank. Exhaling, walk to your hands. Fold. Inhale, roll it up. Exhale, sit down into your chair, squat, drop your arms into cactus arms. Inhale to stand, exhale, fold. Halfway up on your inhale. Big fold on your exhale. 
palms are down. Inhale for your plank. Exhale all the way down. Inhale for your cobra. Pull your heart up. And exhale, meet you in downward facing dog. Walk it out a little bit, shake it out. We'll just do that one more time. And then we'll get to flowing through some different movements. Okay, I like to notice how each, each down dog is a little different. Each round of the same movements feels a little different, hopefully. One more, here we go. Inhaling for your plank. Exhale to your hands. Fold. Roll it up on your inhale. Down into your chair, squat on your exhale, drop your elbows, cactus arms. Inhale to stand. Exhale, fold. Halfway up, inhale. Big fold, exhale. Palms are down. Inhale for plank. Exhale all the way down. Inhale, cobra. Lift your heart. Exhale, downward facing dog. Walk it out here. Take some breaths. Remember, you can take a break in down dog. But maybe start to play around with moving your hands and feet a lot, making them really active. Start spreading your toes and lifting them as you pedal out your feet. Notice how that feels in your arches and the backs of your legs. Maybe also come up on the fingertips of one or two hands, really activating the muscles in the center of your palm to lift upward. I like to think of the palm of each hand as kind of a donut or a suction cup shape. Okay, see if you could put your palms down and still keep that sucking upward feeling. Okay, friends, let's start to move a little bit. Remember to take breaks if you need to. Let's get the right leg up and out behind. And I just wanna to start to circle out this right leg. So make some big, nice circles with it. Like the right toe has a paintbrush on it and you want it to paint a big Zen circle painting with it, with your paintbrush. Okay, and if this is too much on the left leg, you can come down to the left knee and do it and it'll be more gentle. Big breath, a lot of space in that right hip. All the places you can take it. Now let's rewind it. Okay, now we're gonna warm this hip a little bit. So here we go. Next time you point the leg out to the right, hold it and then look at it. Make sure it's parallel with the ground. It's at a right angle with your mat. Breathe. This is challenging. So if you need to drop your left knee, you know that you can. But let's take three more breaths here. Hold that leg out there. Could you point the toe and make it a little longer? Two more breaths. Feel the warmth building in your body. One more breath here. Very nice. With your inhale, swing the leg out behind you. Exhale here, draw that knee forward and plant that right foot between your hands. Ah, go ahead and drop the back knee here and use that right knee to press yourself up to a nice little low lunge. And take your time to get comfy. Let the left knee be exactly where you need it to be. Feel free to shuffle and uh, fidget but then find a place where you can activate this lunge properly, okay? So the legs are a little bit warm and it's a good time for us to start to press down into the front leg, press down into the back leg, and of course, try to draw them subtly toward each other. So think of an energetic snapping together of both legs as they press down. So you're gonna feel that right the hamstring light up, the left quadriceps light up, and that's what we're looking for. 
So let's start to move from that energetic uh, stability. So lift up with your arms, maybe look up. You're gonna take a big breath in here. Okay, keep the activation in your legs. Just drop your fingers underneath your shoulders. You can do it on either side of the right leg and pull back on that right hip. Point those toes at your nose. So opening up the back of the leg. Let's do it again. Right foot on the floor. Inhale, low lunge, strong legs push down. And exhale, fingers down, pull back on the hip. Point the toes at your nose. So let's take a few more rounds like this. If you want this to be very gentle, you can make it very gentle, okay? You can make the movements really subtle. You hardly have to pull back on the hip if you like, if it's too much. Okay, and if you want it to be really warming and opening and stretchy, you can do that too. If you want an extra balance challenge and you're feeling pretty stable here, you can try doing it with your eyes closed. Just see how that feels. Let's do it three more times. Two more. Last one. Okay, your fingertips are down. You're ending in that half split. Go ahead and ground that right foot again. Ground your left hand underneath your shoulder and then let's reach up with the right hand. Nice big twist here. So take a few breaths in this twist, pressing down into your legs still. Think of drawing them toward each other still and breathe into that big space between your collarbones. So you have the option to keep this really gentle. If you want to, you can just put both hands on the floor. Okay, just keep it nice and gentle. One hand up would be a little bit more spicy. And if you feel like you want some extra spice here, you can tuck the back toes, the left toes, and hover the left knee. So you wanna think of dropping the right hip as you lift the left, okay? Big breath here. Let's take one more big warming breath here. And then slowly come down, drop the back knee if it was up. Drop that right hand underneath your right shoulder, okay? From here, we're gonna tuck the back toes. So the left knee, the left knee will lift and we'll send that right leg up and out behind. Find a three leg dog here. And just for a moment, bend that right knee, point the right toe over to the left as you pull back on that left hip, finding a scorpion posture to open up the right hip. And go ahead and press down into that right hand a little extra. Maybe one more breath right here. And let's drop that right foot next to the left and find yourself back in downward facing dog. Walk it out here. And let's just play around with a little in between vinyasa. So feel free to come along or take a break if you need one, okay? But we'll meet back in downward facing dog anyway. Here we go. Inhaling here, find your plank. Exhaling here, come halfway down. Just pull your elbows into your ribs just that much. You can use your knees to do that. Inhale back up to a plank and exhale. Step to your hands and fold. Bend your knees here, drop your hips a little bit and inhale as you lift up to a chair posture, Utkatasana. Think of drawing your legs toward each other. Okay, exhale, as you stand up straight, I want you to open your arms out to the right and twist, looking back behind you. Inhale, back to that chair posture, arms up, dropping down. Exhale, straighten up, look to the left this time, big open arms. Inhale, back to your chair. And exhale here, drop your palms and fold. 
Halfway up on your inhale. Big fold on your exhale. Palms are down, inhale to your plank. Okay, just like before, you can use your knees or not. As we exhale, halfway down, put your elbows on your ribs. Inhale all the way up. Now exhale all the way down. Put the elbows on the ribs all the way down. Here comes a cobra. On your inhale, pull that heart up and forward, okay? You might want to lift your legs up off the ground, then we would call it an upward facing dog. But either way, the tailbone points down, the heart lifts up. And with your exhale, downward facing dog. I'll meet you there. <sighs> Take some nice breath here. Now that we're a little bit warmer, we can spend some time just maybe taking five or six long, slow breaths, pushing into your hands, pulling back on your feet, lifting your kneecaps. See if you could lengthen your neck even more and pull your elbows slightly inward, increasing that sliding feeling of the shoulder blades, moving down your back. All right, we're gonna get to moving around and do the other side. So here we go. We have the left leg up and out behind here. So get it up and out. And then we're gonna make circles with it. The left leg all the way out to the left. Take it all the places it can go. Moving that hip around, drawing a huge circle. See if you even wanna bring it as close to the front of the mat as you can. Cross it over past the other side of the right leg. Cover some ground. Remember, you can drop your right knee to do this if you want it to be more gentle. And you can even bend the left knee and just do it with a bent knee. Let's rewind our left leg circles. And the next time you have the left leg out to the left, let's pause right there and just breathe. So look at it, make sure it's parallel with the floor. It points out to the left, hold and breathe. <sighs> nice work for your upper body, nice work for your lower body, nice work for your core. Okay, oh, total body action movement here, breathe and hold. One more breath. All right, inhale, send the left leg up and out behind you. And exhale, send that left knee forward. Drop the foot between your hands. Ah. <laughs> Drop the right knee. We are coming up to a little low lunge here. So take your time deciding how you want your low lunge to be. Okay, sometimes if you have some sensitivity in that right knee, you can double or triple fold your mat for the little kneecap to sit on or just stick a sweater under there or sometimes repositioning it makes a world of difference. So I do wanna encourage you to fidget and find your perfect low lunge. Okay, once you have found that, we'll start to activate, pushing down into both legs, push the floor down, and then draw them in toward each other. And we know when we activate just enough, just a little tiny bit goes a long way, we get the release that we're looking for on the back of the left leg and the front of the right. So from your strong, stable base, push down. We're gonna move, inhaling arms up in your low lunge. And exhaling, fingers down under your shoulders. You can do them on either side of your left leg this time and pull the left hip back, pointing the toes at your nose. And we'll do this a few more times. Okay, inhaling into your low lunge, Anjane Asana. Exhaling into your half split, Ardha Hanumanasana. Maybe close your eyes. Just feel some nice space opening up 
the fronts and backs of the legs, especially the left. And just remember that it's so important. Anytime we wanna lengthen a tissue, we need to keep it active. So stay active in the legs. Okay, we'll do it one more time, just one more. And then when you land with your hands back on the ground underneath your shoulders, we're gonna pause here, plant that left foot back on the ground in a lunge shape. Plant the right hand on the ground underneath your right shoulder and reach up with the left hand. Okay, we'll take a few breaths here in this nice little twist. I'll spin around to face you. Okay, remember to keep your legs active, actively pushing down, actively pulling in. And also you can drop the left hand and make this more gentle, okay, anytime at all. Okay, if you wanna spice it up, tuck the right toes, hover the right knee, and you're thinking of dropping your left hip as you lift your right. Allow this big twist to spread open your chest and think of moving your collarbones apart. Do one more big breath here. And then let it go. Drop that back knee, drop the top hand underneath your left shoulder. And then from here, let's bring it up to a three leg dog. So we lift that right knee. We send that left leg up and out behind. Pause here, let's turn it into a scorpion by bending the left knee, pointing the left toes to the right, but be sure not to let your right hip move out to the right as well. Pull that right hip back as the left toes point over your head, over your hips. And also make sure to drop a little bit into that left shoulder so the shoulders stay level. Breathe here into the back of that right leg. Ah, go ahead and let that go. Drop the left foot next to the right. Walk it out. Okay, notice how the back of both legs feel. Should be feeling great. Nice opening behind the hamstrings, the calves. Shoulders should be feeling a little warmer as well. So we'll take another little vinyasa. Feel free to skip or come along. Inhaling here, find your plank. Exhaling here, halfway down, elbows to ribs. Maybe you use your knees. Inhale back up to plank. Exhale to your hands and fold. Bend your knees, drop your hips. Inhale up to your chair squat. Okay, remember we did this last time. Exhale as you stand and twist, opening to the right. Maybe look behind you. Inhale back to your chair squat. Exhale, twist and stand up as you look to the left. Inhale back to your chair. And exhale, fold, palms down, hips up. Halfway up, inhale. Big fold, exhale. Palms are down here, inhale to your plank. Okay, you can use your knees or not. Exhale, halfway down, hold. Inhale, press it up. This time, exhale all the way down. Slide your elbows across your ribs. Inhale for a cobra or an upward facing dog. Either way, tailbone down, heart up. And exhale, downward facing dog. Let's take five or six breaths right here. Push the floor. Try on all the little cues that help you in a downward dog. Maybe try one of my favorite tricks. Try sliding your fingers 
your hands forward about two inches to make your spine that much longer. And then continue to lift your kneecaps, allowing your heels to drop to the floor. Pull those elbows inward to release the shoulder blades down your back. And lengthen the waist on all sides. Find strength, okay? Take up a lot of space in this posture. As you're ready here, we're gonna start to move. So inhaling, lift that right leg up and out behind. Let's scorpion it, pointing the right toe to the left, opening that right hip up, should feel nice. And exhale, swing the right foot forward, drop that foot between your hands. Let's drop the back heel. So the left heel is now down. Coming up to a warrior one on your inhale, lift it up. Okay, exhale here, drop your hands down in front of you. And we're gonna move into a little twist. So take this left elbow to the outside of the right knee, looking over to the right. And I'll spin around to meet you here because I wanna take a few breaths here. So if you need a break, you can drop the left knee, okay? But the left toes are still on the floor if you have the knee up, because we're still in a warrior posture. You can also just put the left foot on, left hand on the floor if that takes a lot of the balancingness out, if it's too balancing, because it is pretty balancing. So breathe here with me, push your palms together, push top palm and bottom palm together so that you could align them right next to your heart. Breathe, feel that really nice stretch along the whole back of your rib cage. Find a long spine, maybe three more breaths here. Two more breaths. Last one, big breath in. And exhale, let this go. Drop your hands underneath your shoulders. And we're gonna walk them over to the left side of the mat. Point your toes out to the left. So we're in a wide leg forward fold. And I'll turn around to face you again. Okay, so wide leg forward fold. Make sure your feet are just right at the perfect width. Okay, I like to start out with my feet about a leg length apart. So when you look down, you see an equilateral triangle, equal on all sides with your legs in the floor. Hands under shoulders so your spine can be nice and long. And we'll just start to bend into one knee and bend into the other. Bend and bend. Side to side. As you move your hips to this side, think of also moving them back so that you can drop a little more deeply into each side lunge. Move those hips back. Okay, hopefully this feels nice in your ankles too. You should feel that outside of your ankles and maybe Cultivate a little extra lifty feeling in each arch. Lifty arch. Come back up through center here and then turn your heels more in and your toes more out and bend your knees to point out at your toes. And then you can grab one thigh with each hand and press it up. Okay, we can call this a supported horse posture. So take a moment to make sure your toes and your knees really do point out, almost absurdly so. And that with your hands supporting your upper body, maybe you feel like you can drop your hips nice and low, almost level with your knees. And you don't have to work so hard with your legs because your strong arms are holding up your upper body, okay? So let's cultivate that also a sense of pressing the knees away from each other so that you have a nice stretch on the insides of your legs, okay? So we'll get a nice twist from this. Keeping your hands pressing down so that your spine is really long. Inhale, long spine, and exhale, drop that left shoulder as you look over the right. 
Big twist across your back. Inhale, press back up to center. Exhale, drop the right shoulder as you look over the left. Inhale, back to center. Now let's take a few more like this. I want you to kind of feel it out. Find some nice spaciousness across the backs of the ribs. Okay, continue to keep your spine long by pressing those hands down. And notice the great stretch across the inner thigh on each leg. Maybe one more like this on each side. Letting those hips drop back away from your head. And then bringing it back to center, go ahead and bring one hand down underneath each shoulder, okay? You can point your toes in here, point your heels out just as much as you like, and then take a moment just to let your head hang. Ah, oh, let your upper body just hang in traction here. You can walk your hands back between your feet and you can keep walking them even further back if you like, pointing your head at the center of the earth. Feel free to give a nice push down into each leg and a nice lift in each arch. Maybe you even experiment with lifting your toes here. And if the top of your head touches the floor like mine is, you can take your feet closer, okay? And just go back in, okay? We want the top of the head floating off the floor. Nice breath. Great stretch across the whole back of each leg. Maybe one more breath here. Once you're ready, <clears throat> come back out of this. Hands back underneath your shoulders. We're gonna walk hands back over by that right foot. Turn those right toes forward. And let's see if we could bring it up and back to a three-leg dog from here. So inhale, right leg up and out. Let's scorpion that hip. Toes point to the left as we pull back on the left hip. Notice all the extra space on the back of your left leg. Maybe even extend your right leg if it feels good. And then we'll let it go. Exhale, right foot down. We're back in a downward facing dog. And let's just go straight to the other side from here. So inhaling here, left leg up and out behind. Let's scorpion that hip for a moment. Point the toes to the right. Pull back on that right hip. And exhale, send that left foot forward. Drop it between your hands. We're dropping the right heel here, coming up to a warrior one. So inhaling here, all hands forward, shoulders and hips facing forward, strong legs. Exhaling here, hands down in front. Let's use the right elbow on the left knee this time. So remember, gentle options, you can put the right hand down. You can even drop your right knee, okay? Breathe here, think of hooking that right elbow on the outer edge of the knee, and then pushing your two hands together to be near your heart. Big breath, so feel all that action, that twistiness in your spine. And the more you push down into your legs here, the more stability you give your lower body, the more mobility your upper body can experience. Maybe even looking up. Nice work, yogis. Twists are so powerful and detoxifying and recalibrating for your whole body. One more breath here. And we're gonna let it go. Drop your hands underneath your shoulders. This time, walk your hands out to the right. Turn your toes out in that direction for another wide leg forward fold. And I'll turn around to face you again. Okay, but we're in the same 
place. So another wide leg forward fold. Turn the toes in and find that long spine. Hands underneath your shoulders. So from here, just ground into one hand and reach up with the other. Okay, find a lot of space between your collarbones as you do that. And then exhale to bring it down. Switching sides, ground into the bottom hand. Inhale, reach up with the other. Exhale, bring it down. So just close your eyes. I just want you to move and twist here. Breathe and move. Do your best to keep a long neck, even though it might feel challenging. See if you can begin to notice some subtleties here. Okay, for example, as you move, keep your tailbone and the top of your head always pointing away from each other so that your spine does not uh, curve too much in one direction. Okay, losing length. We want to create a lot of length when we're twisting. Also, keep both shoulders active. In other words, don't crank on the bottom shoulder. Keep it active. Keep the elbows bent. Even if you feel like it limits your range of motion. Okay, one more subtlety to notice is your feet. Are your feet clocked off? Rock them to the outer edge of each foot. Lift your toes and suck your arch up. Next time you come up, whatever side it is, hold and just breathe right here, okay? Point the tailbone back. Activate both shoulders. Lift your toes. Breathe. Think of stacking top shoulder over bottom as you level off your hips. Once again, giving stability to that lower body is going to give us mobility up top. As you're ready, switch sides. Top hand down, down hand up. Hold and breathe. Point that tailbone back. Strong shoulders, lifted toes and arches. One more breath here. Bring it down. Okay, from here, we're going to walk hands back over by the left foot. Hands back over by the left foot now. Turn those left toes forward. Okay, and we're gonna make it up and back to a three-leg dog. So inhale here, left leg up and out behind you. Let's scorpion that hip. Point the toes to the right, pulling back on the right hip dropping that left shoulder. Maybe for your last breath here, you extend the left leg. And then let it go. All feet down. Go ahead and drop to your knees here. Okay, hips over knees. Just walk your hands a big step forward. Keep the hips over your knees and drop your forehead. Big breaths into your chest and your heart here. Okay, little open heart pose just to get the shoulders nice and soft and open. Maybe coming up on your fingertips, maybe looking at your hands. One more breath here. And then go ahead and walk your hands all the way back so that your hips sit on your heels and you are back in your child's pose where we started. <sighs> Allow your breath to relax and let go and just be effortless and uncontrolled. Hmm. 
and allow your body to do the same. Effortless, soft. With each breath, feel more tension, any little tension that remains just melting out of your body. And take some time just to be still and notice all the sensations in your body and all the qualities of your breath. Notice your thoughts as well. Please give yourself as long as you can to just rest here and let your practice soak in. This is where I'll leave you for our practice today. Thanks so much for practicing with me.